Welcome everyone to the Pan-African Film Festival's uh, panel discussion today about the documentary, Raymond Lewis, L.A. Legend. Uh, I am your moderator today, Anthony Johnson. I'm a film critic, member of African Ameri American Film Critics Association. So excited, so glad, so proud to be here to have this opportunity to uh, speak with a number of individuals that uh, played a key role in the making of this documentary. So with that said, uh, how about uh, we take some time and go into introductions. So uh, as a part of our panel today, uh, we have directors as well as co-producers, Dean Prater, as well as Ryan Polomsky. Welcome Hello. gentlemen. Thank you. We also have Camilla Lewis, who is a co-producer as well as Raymond Lewis's daughter. How Hi, are you, thank you. I'm well, thank you. So glad to have you. Thank you, I'm a pleasure to be here. We also have Dr. Adrian Chivers, uh, who is uh, a pastor as well as he's been involved with the County of Los Angeles for over 35 years. And an interesting fact, uh, if I understand this correctly, you played every high school as well as college basketball game with Mr. Raymond Lewis. Yes, I think I'm the only player. The only player, thank you, thank you. So, uh, so glad to have you. And then we also have Dr. Anthony Samad, who is a professor and the executive director of the African American Political and Economic Institute at the campus of Cal State University, Dominguez Hills. Uh, he is also an accomplished author, having uh, written six books. Dr. Samad, welcome, sir. Pleasure. All right. So um, I'm so excited to get into this uh, discussion. I had an opportunity to uh, screen the film over the weekend. Uh, documentaries happen to actually be my favorite genre uh, as a film critic. So um, how about we, we go ahead and just jump into this. So uh, questions for the filmmakers and producers and, you know, whoever wants to take, take this feel free, but uh, really a two part question, how did the making of this film come about, number one? And then number two, uh, why did you feel like this was a, uh, uh, an important project to take on? Well, uh, I actually knew about Raymond uh, back in 1971, I was a uh, sophomore at Dominguez High School in Compton. And uh, we kept hearing about Bourbon Day and uh, nobody, Prior to that, no one had ever even heard of Bourbon Day until Raymond got there and, and they started winning all these titles every year. And so I, I followed him through high school and college. And after that, didn't really know what happened since this, this was decades before, you know, we had any social media or even ESPN. So uh, I kind of wondered what happened to him. And uh, after all these years, you know, once you get out of high school, you know, we pretty much go on. Okay, but I, I, I always wondered what had happened to Raymond because uh, I, I just, I, I didn't know. And then um, a friend of mine, Eddie Williams, who was also a teammate of Raymond's, uh, we, we actually worked together back in, uh, in the early 80s. And uh, we would talk about Raymond after, you know, after work and it was like, oh, everything Raymond was doing. I was like, man, whatever happened? Yeah, he went to Philadelphia and, you know, had a contract dispute. And, but my thing was, I knew that he was so good as a basketball, he was a brilliant basketball player. And I just wanted to document that uh, in, in, in the form of a website or something to kind of introduce Brandon to a new generation. And then I, I came along about, I don't know, six or seven years after Dean had originally launched this idea uh and and this website and uh, i'm i'm coming from the opposite end of the country i'm from philadelphia i vaguely remember reading about raymond's story uh growing up at, in philadelphia i think it was in some uh, old sports illustrated articles uh, when i moved out here in 2014 um i was doing some research on some on some projects and i came across raymond's story i came across dean's website and I just found it to be a, a fascinating story, a mystery, uh, an important story that needed to be told. And um, I had no idea it would take us this long, seven or eight years later to be sitting here, but I'm so happy to be sitting here, so happy that it's done. And, uh, but the origination was just, it, I think it just strikes everybody when you read Raymond's story because it's just, it, there's so many aspects to it that 
so many different people can relate to. So um, it was just a, a pleasure to work on and just a rich story to, to work with. Um, and why it's important, I think it's important as Dr. Samad uh, you know, has, has brought to the table for history to be remembered and for history to be told, um, you know, all histories to be told. So this is one that had definitely been forgotten and left behind um, through time. And for the sport of basketball, uh, for the community of Los Angeles, I felt like we felt like it was really important to tell. So Awesome, awesome. Uh, Camilla, can you share about uh, your role? I mean, so this uh, sounds like seven to eight years in the making to, you know, bring this project to fruition. Um, when did you come into the fold? Uh, were you there from the beginning? Or, or, or talk with us about uh, how, uh, how that all uh, transpired. Um, yeah, I met Dean, I think it was 2005 at Bourbon Day. They were naming, uh, doing a, I think a plaque or retirement of his jersey at Bourbon Day. And I had Dean come up to me and we spoke and uh, we just kept in touch. And from that, after that, I believe he put up the website and we've just kind of been picking at it. it. It picked up about six, seven years ago and whatever they've needed from me in terms of stories, family photos or whatever else, I've it just been a part and it's been a pleasure to work with Ryan and Dean on this. Awesome, awesome. And it was wonderful to, to hear your commentary in the, uh, in the documentary as well. Thank you. So doc, Dr. Chivers, a uh, question for you and as, as being the only uh, player to have played every high school and college basketball game uh, with Mr. Lewis, you know, over the years, decades, right, uh, in, in various sports, be it football or basketball, um, to, you know, any professional sport, you know, right, we, we critics and, and fans like to compare athletes through generations and what have you. Um, can you share with us, um, being someone that played with Mr. Lewis, uh, just how good he was or how special, um, you know, his talent was in that here we are 50 years later, right? And, and, and we're, we're talking about this, this man. Yes, I, um, I know that um, it was a lot of us players, um, you know, who played with him at Verbum Day. I mean, there's a number of us. And there was a lot of us went to Cal State. But um, myself and Raymond went at the same time. We had one other guy, Thomas Moore. Uh, and we went to Cal State together. Then we had Dwight and Randy and them. They came after Raymond left. And um, that freshman and sophomore year where we was together and roomed together, where we had already been in three years, three championships together. But um, those were some of my, um, you know, certain times in your life that you keep close to your heart. Let's take away all the, uh, the phenomena of the kind of athlete he was and uh, all his natural talent. Um, what a lot of people don't know was the kind of soft-spoken guy he was. I've read in papers and I've heard a lot of people say, Raymond boastfully said this, he did that. But anybody who knew Raymond, he was like fairly soft-spoken and to his partners, he would say certain things, but he did not carry himself around in a way where he was boastful. And he was one guy that didn't let strangers know what he was thinking, you know what I mean? And so uh, I noticed in the beginning even back when all the newspapers came out after he passed away, there was a lot of people who didn't know Raymond says, and Raymond was like this and Raymond was like that. And um, he was relatively a soft-spoken guy if you didn't know him. So there is sort of a, an impression that's out there that he was this boastful guy and he was bad and he, you know, he, that just wasn't him. And I know a lot of guys have expressed that, but if, if Raymond is sharing something with you, that's one thing. But when you say it on these kind of 
programs, it gives the impression that that's the way he was. And most people didn't really know him. And I, that's what I can say. The players, Raymond, I mean, Randy, Dwight, uh, Eddie Williams, uh, we all knew him personally. But there were a lot of people who said a lot of things in a lot of the newspapers that just didn't even know him, but they talked about what they heard. They talked about what they heard somebody say, but he was a fairly uh, soft-spoken guy and he shied away from the camera with all of his um, athletic ability. He wanted that to be seen while he was playing on the floor, but he was shied away from the camera and from a lot of extra attention whenever he was not playing. So I don't know if that's ever been said, but I can actually say he was a lot more of a soft-spoken guy than, than it's been said in a lot of newspapers and films over the years. And that part needs to be known about him. And I'm sure his daughter knows that, but there's a lot of players who played with him and knew him and knew how bad he was. So they, they added a lot of things in about his personality. A lot of that stuff wasn't true, you know? And I, I think it's important to say that in this kind of venue, you know? Absolutely. I agree. Definitely, thank you for sharing that. I, and I think even in the documentary, you, you get a little bit of taste of that where he's, um, uh, there's some footage where he's being interviewed by uh, Brian Gumble. Yes. And, 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 and seeing his responses, uh, you know, kind of get a, a feeling of, you know, that he maybe wasn't necessarily so just, you know, boastful and comfortable, you know, being in front of the uh, camera and extroverted and things, things of that nature. That's right. Um, now, you know, a lot of athletes are, you know, to your point, are, are one way off of the court, you know, family and friends, but, you know, on the court, you know, they, they switch to something different. Um, I mean, was was he different on the court in terms of uh, his, his, his style of play? And, you know, in, in the documentary, we hear commentary from, you know, different athletes that he played against and, you know, how, um, you know, how dominant he was. Yeah. Um, what, 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 what was your, uh, your, your experience well, in that? Well, as a player who was on the same team with him, and I'm sure Randy Dwight and Eddie Williams will tell you, when Raymond was playing basketball, he said very little, but his presence of that talent that was just, you know, just leaking off of him said so much. But we go in a huddle, Raymond didn't say that much. You know what I mean? Um, we're on the floor and unless, you know, you say something to him, He's not really going to say anything back to you. If he wanted you to go somewhere, he'd give you the head, the look, the point. But the rest of it, he took care of himself. <laughs> so like I say, he, he's, he's a kind of person that there was some mystery to him. Now, us who knew him personally, and when we get around and we talk, we bragging and talking crazy. I mean, Raymond said what he said, but it wasn't for people to take those things because sometimes some things are being said that he said that I wouldn't share with you because they weren't for that venue you know what I mean sure. for people to take the, well, the, the, this is the way he was and he was like this and he was like ah, that's not here that wasn't who he was if you were hanging around with him every day you know one thing about him was and I'll say this real quick and it hadn't been mentioned but let me tell you about Raymond Raymond studied the game in a way I had never seen before. And I'm saying Raymond could tell you every NBA player. He could tell you where he went to college at, how much he averaged, what kind of player he was. So when it got to the point that, uh, you know, so I saw one guy on the film saying, Raymond just looked at him like it wasn't nothing. Well, Raymond knew how good he was and he knew exactly how good they were. And they surmised that he was sizing people up, but he knew most of them. He, he, he was so quick until it was scary and nobody could touch his shot. They couldn't stop him from going where he was gonna go. So he was 
the closest thing to a basketball god that I ever seen. And I played with him every day. Not to mention, and so did Raymond Dwight, I mean, Randy Dwight and uh, Eddie Williams at different times. But not to mention times with downtimes, we would get, like when we lived out at Cal State, we had apartment together and lived together. We would go from practice, go in and eat, and then we couldn't help from going out in the back parking lot and playing basketball, right? After practice. And I'm telling you, I seen some things that that guy did that was just, I couldn't explain it. <laughs> I'm telling you, him, myself, Michael uh, Jackson, who was uh, our roommate, Raymond didn't do everything. Everything that people saw, you didn't see everything. And I'm just saying that because I finally get a chance to say it. <laughs> certainly, certainly. Thank you, thank you for sharing that. Yes, so, so right. So we we've talked about the you know the game itself and and um, you know some of Mr. Lewis's talents talents and skills on the court. Um, you know, and we'll take a step back and talk about the other side of this, right? Because a part of this documentary and what the story is telling is that you know he was drafted by the Philadelphia 76ers. And um, mm-hmm. once he was drafted, um, quickly came into a contract dispute. And, um, and that's where the course of his career um, turned um, yes. for the worst. And um, it, me watching this documentary, and this, this question is coming to you, Dr. Samad, uh, you know, I, I kept thinking about Kurt Flood, who I guess it was what, 1969, where you know he was being traded, major league baseball player was being traded, um, fought the trade, went all the way up to the Supreme Court. He ultimately ended uh, ended up being blackballed from major league baseball. Did make a contribution around you know getting conversation started around free agency and things of that nature. But um, question to you, Doctor Doctor Samad. I mean, what what are your thoughts around um, you know situations like this? Uh, of you know, like in the case of Raymond Lewis to where, right, you know, goes into this professional league, um, a disagreement, and, you know, they find themselves blackballed from, um, from the sport, essentially. Well, first of all, this is a, a political story, and it is an economic story. Yes. And that's what the Donnelly Institute does. We uh, basically create digital archives around the Uh, political and economic impact of African-Americans since 1850, uh, solely for the purpose to recover institutional memory that the community is losing. Uh, But I have a personal attachment uh, to the Raymond Lewis story. I had been actually tracking this story for a minute. I I knew another gentleman uh, by the name of Fred Smith who was doing a documentary and he had given up on the doc. And... uh, so I continue to, you know, just every now and then search the name. And I, I came across Ryan and Dean's uh, documentary, and that was years ago. Um, and uh, I thought the documentary had died. And so uh, the personal attachment that I have and how I know Adrian is when I came out of high school, I wanted to play with the Room Day guys. Um, you know, UCLA was the first consideration, but... Uh, you know, David Hamilton, I mean, uh, 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 Roy Hamilton and, and David Greenwood went over to LA and they had, you know, Brad Holland and Kiki Vandeway. So I said, I go play with the other Verbum Day guys. And I knew that uh, Raymond had went to Cal State LA and was gone, but I knew Adrian and Randy were still there. Uh, and so I went there. Uh, and so, you know, I knew these guys and I knew this story hadn't been told. And so I reached out to Ryan and Dean and said, look, uh, where's where's this documentary? And they they shared it with me. And I said, I wanna help you finish this documentary. And so the Donnelly Institute and myself came on as co-producers for the event to get it finished. Um, Because really the politics of sports have come full circle. Uh, You know, uh, another, friend of mine who's also in the doc, Senator Steve Bradford, recently uh, passed uh, legislation that allows college athletes uh, to monetize their image. 
uh, while they're in college. Mm -hmm. uh, old Raymond Lewis story was about money from day one uh, and him trying to negotiate his value and his worth, which is what we see athletes doing today. We see, you know, uh, Dak Prescott negotiating his value and his worth. You know, we saw Anthony Davis, you know, essentially sit out a season because he wanted to leave and they said, we, we're not going to let you leave and we own you, so we just going to sit you down. Uh, you know, there's conversations about athletes this season down or, or trying to, you know, get out of their contracts. The NFL is fighting um, the NBA model of players determining uh, that they want to play in a different space. And Raymond Lewis basically – it, it, it's remarkable to me that it took 50 years to tell this story. Yes. He's been deceased for 20 years. Uh, and, but this was a signature point. I mean, uh, the year after Raymond Lewis held out, the NBA uh, basically with the Oscar Robertson rule began to allow uh, players to negotiate their free agency. Uh, so he was just a little bit early, uh, but they punished him. They punished him purposely. A person with that kind of talent, there's no way in the world that they said, you, you saw Antonio Brown just act a straight up fool, blow up a hundred million dollars and end up on a Super Bowl team. Okay. There was no reason for the NBA to punish Raymond Lewis the way they did. And so that was the interest that we had in this story because it was a political and economic lesson that we could carry forward in perpetuity. Uh, and uh, Raymond Lewis should never be forgotten. They're still talking about him 50 years later. Absolutely. Certainly, certainly. Camilla, um, being the daughter of Raymond Lewis, um, you know, for, you know, viewers that uh, get the opportunity to see this amazing documentary, wh what would you want um, people to take away from or, or, or understand about, about your father? Well, and I think the documentary did a really good job of highlighting the type of man he was. Um, he was a, he was a soft -spoke, spoken man. He wasn't, he was shy, you know, he was a shy guy. <laughs> and um, besides the basketball talent that he was a great father, he was married to the same woman since that he met in college. My mother had two kids. Um, he loved his kids. He was a, I went everywhere with him. You know, younger, I was at the Drew League. I, I was everywhere with him. Um, I want people to really know the type of man he was and that he did stand for something. He did have morals. He grew up in a very uh, middle-class uh, family on both sides. And I think that's kind of got lost in translation as someone mentioned earlier. Um, about the type of man he was. So I'm, I'm very happy and very pleased with the way the documentary displayed how he was, you know? So I'm pleased with that. And that's my, my, my takeaway from it, besides the basketball greatness, because we all know that, but just the type of man he was, I wanted that to be highlighted. Awesome. You know, I, I um, prior to the documentary, I had never heard of Raymond Lewis. And so I'm, I'm so glad and, and happy that, uh, you guys all were able to put this project together. Um, I, I think it's awesome when, you know, you're able to bring these stories forward because just because, you know, mainstream uh, media doesn't necessarily put a light on it doesn't mean that it's not, it's not an important story or that uh, it should not be heard. Um, now we're coming up on our, um, you know, uh, uh, final time for the, for the panel. Uh, what I want to do is just take a couple of minutes for each of you to, to go back around and share any closing remarks, uh, comments that you, you'd like to uh, share. And uh, we'll start with you, Dean. Well, like I said earlier, my main objective was to get Raymond's story out to the public and introduce him to a whole, whole new world that had never heard of it, including yourself. And, uh, and, and just to give him a, a permanent home to where you know, people can read about him, study about him, and just find out more about him. And, uh, you know, I, I think uh, what we've accomplished thus far in terms of getting the film done, uh, I, I think it's, it, 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 it says a lot that if you really want to try to get something done, no matter how, what kind of obstacle, obstacles you face, 
Yeah. If you really, if your heart is into it, don't worry about the money or anything like that, you can get it done. Absolutely. And Ryan? Only that, you know, I set out with, with, with uh, certain expectations in this film and, and they've all been exceeded so much. You know, everybody on this panel uh, around here, we couldn't have done the film without you guys. Uh, the, the relationships that I've built um, and, you know, my partnership with Dean, who's just been an, an amazing partner and, and, you know, a good friend. So the things that have come out of this film, besides the film itself, are, you know, I'll carry with me for the rest of my life. But for the film itself, you know, um, we're excited to take it out into the world. We're excited to see what it can do, uh, what kind of dialogue it can create, what kind of, um, what kind of uh, stereotypes it can challenge and barriers it can break. And, you know, excited for it to last for, for, for generations, like Dean said, we can really, we can, we can create a history that, that can now can live on and can be part of, you know, be part of our, our, our society. So um, just very thankful to PAFF, thankful to everybody here and, and uh, can't wait to show it to the world again. Absolutely. Dr. Chivers. Yes, I wanted to say that um, one thing that I did see in the, in the uh, previewing is that it was actually said later on toward the end of the, uh, of the documentary and Dr. Samad brought it back a few minutes ago when he was talking. Um, Raymond, knew what he was supposed to get because he studied the game that well. It wasn't just that he was some hard-headed guy and just wanted the world. And what he didn't, and as we can see now, what he didn't understand is that it was he was ahead of his time and he was probably going to have to take another route to get what he wanted to get. Because like Dr. Samad said, people taking the same stance he's, he's taken and they do get what they want today. But here we are 45, 50 years later and Raymond had the understanding of how good you had to be to get what your just do was. So a lot of people took that and mistook that as him being uh, hard-headed or too braggadocious and he couldn't you know, just be a person to settle for less. No, he, he understood. That's the part that, that people need to understand. He did understand how good he was and he could go out and do it at will. And I, I think the whole disappointment of the system and how it treated him got him down and a little further down and then down. And so um, what we need to know today is he was definitely ahead of his time, but today, people are doing and achieving what he had tried to achieve a long time ago. It, it, it was just ahead of his time. But they sometimes people take that and attribute it to his personality and he wanted what he wasn't supposed to want. That's not true. That's no, he, he wanted what he knew he deserved by working so hard, mm -hmm. you know? And I, I hope that people come to understand that because Dr. Samad said it again, other people are now doing what he took, taking the stance that he actually did take. So I'm so thankful for everybody on this panel and um, these producers and Camila was always been in our hearts for the longest. And the fact that uh, you guys have taken it, uh, the, the three producers along, Dr. Samad helped move it forward there are a lot of us players still living today that really appreciate the fact that this thing is being exhibited and shown because there's a lot of us out here that still love him, you know? And um, he, I, I just am thankful that I was asked to be on so that I could express this on behalf of a lot of players. Uh, Raymond uh, was an exceptional man and his talent was so exceptional till people overlooked him as a person and just looked at his talent wishing they had it. <laughs> but I'm telling you, he was a more soft-spoken man than some of the people are saying. And uh, like Camila, Camila would tell you, uh, her dad was a, was a good guy, you know, 
and I appreciate the opportunity for this to get shown and 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 and, and expose to the athletes today. Certainly, so certainly. You. Thank you. Uh, sure thing. Well, I think that's a, a perfect way for us to close out uh, on behalf of the pan. I would like to have one closing statement. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Please go ahead. No, I'd like to thank the Pan African Film Festival for uh, selecting the film. Uh, I kind of raised Dean and Ryan stress a little bit. I said, you got to get me this film by December. No excuses. I need this film by December because I know the platform that you guys represent and how you guys can help get this out there. Um, and the stories, uh, particularly in Los Angeles history, need to be told. And from a sports perspective, you know, we tell the stories of the high flyers, you know, the Elgin Baylors, you know, the Dr. J's, the Michael Jordans, the big men, the Wilt Chamberlain, but we need to tell the stories uh, of the guys who play below the rim and the guys that play uh, beyond the arc. And there was an arc when Raymond played, you know. Uh, there was a Steph Curry before Steph Curry. There That's was right. Iverson before Allen Iverson and his name was Raymond Lewis and he's the greatest player that ever came out of Los Angeles and that needs to be said that needs to be said yeah, yeah. that's my final statement thank you thank you uh Camilla <laughs> any 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 closing remarks well on behalf of Raymond Lewis um I just want to thank everyone involved um the film festival as well um and like Dr. Smart said um you know watching the film myself and, and I'm his daughter, I, I was just amazed at some of the things he had to go through, uh, how great his talent was. Um, a lot of the stuff I learned before the three-point line was inventing and before certain things. So I learned a lot just watching the film myself. So I hope everyone is able to enjoy it and also take something from it, take a message from it, from it and that he made his stance and it's not in vain. So I know he's extremely happy and smiling down right now um, and I feel it in my heart every day. So thank you all. Well, thank you. Uh, we appreciate you sharing your father with us. Um, <laughs> on behalf of the Pan-African Film Festival, we'd like to thank all of you guys uh, for your time. Uh, this is an amazing documentary that I encourage everyone to check out. And uh, with that, we'll say <laughs> goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. You. <laughs> goodbye. Hello, my name is Anthony Johnson. I'm a film critic. I'm the movie brother and a proud member of African American Film Critics Association. Uh, I'm reaching out to you personally to uh, invite you to check out the new documentary, Raymond Lewis, LA Legend. This is an amazing documentary about a gentleman by the name of Raymond Lewis, a phenomenal basketball player who was essentially before his time. Before there was Steph Curry, he had Raymond Lewis. And there's so many layers to this documentary from an economic standpoint, political, uh, as well as just straight up sports. So if you're a fan of any of those, you wanna check this out. And also, and after you see the documentary, be sure to participate in the panel discussion where individuals that played a key role in the creation of this project uh, discuss the film. Come check it out.